Hi guys, this is Ryan, and this is part two of my fashion illustration digital to traditional um, tutorial. Um, uh, at the end of this part, um, what I'd like to do is, is take my figure and uh, print it out on my home printer. Now, um, I can, uh, could possibly print the render as you see it right now. Um, that we created in part one of this tutorial um, using Daz Studio. Um, if you haven't watched part one, um, you're welcome to go back and watch that first if you're curious, um, or if you just want to uh, uh, learn how um, we create or convert this 3D render into uh, comic line art in Photoshop, um, you're welcome to continue on. Um, so as I was saying, we could print this um, full color croquis on my home printer. Whoever it's got a gray background and uh, would probably eat up quite a bit of ink and take quite a while to print and probably be kind of hard to trace because um, ultimately what I want to do is take that print out and lay some art paper on top of it and uh, trace the figure's pose. Um, so what I like to do instead is use Photoshop to take this 3D render and render it down uh, to comic line art um, using a couple of the uh, uh, filters and adjustment layers within Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna also do is show you um, how to save uh, all the steps that we do into something called an action. Um, and you can see the actions panel is open here um, on my right hand side. Um, you can also l make it appear anytime by going to Window and then Actions, or by clicking this uh, Play button um, in the Tool Panel if the panel happens to be open. So um, the first thing I want to do is create a new action. So that button is right down here. And if you hover, it'll say create new action. It's going to ask me uh, to name the action. So I'm going to call it comic line art. And since I'm doing this specifically for croquis, and I'm going to be selecting that gray background, I'm going to call it croquis. Because there's an extra step in here that's specific to croquis. So I'm going to press record. And now Photoshop is recording all of my actions. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the magic wand tool. And I'm going to click up in this corner here because the likelihood of any render that I have um, having uh, any other color in the background up here is slim. And you can see it selected everything. Uh, just to note my details up here for my magic wand is that I've got the tolerance set to 1. So it's only going to choose um, basically the color of the pixel that I selected. Um, can, Continuous, um, I have that turned off, um, so that means it'll skip pixels and select in the armholes here. Um, so now I've got the selection. I want to actually select the figure and not the background. So I'm going to go select inverse, and then I'm going to go to my layers panel, select it, and then press the apply layer mask button or add layer mask button. So now what it did is it masked out the background and left my selection visible. And what I, we're going to do now is right click on the mask and choose apply layer mask. And what that's going to do is basically going to delete all the background. Now I'm going to go up to image and I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to go to black and white and I'm going to press OK. And now my image has turned to black and white. If you notice here in the actions panel it's adding all of um, the steps I'm taking as I'm taking them to the comic line art croquis um, action. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I'm going to turn the contrast way up. And the reason why is because I want to really add, darken up these shadows um, at all of the edges. I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to go to filter, no, nope, I'm sorry, I'm lying, image, adjustments, and I'm going to choose posterize. And that's going to take it and kind of render it down to line. I've got the preview turned on so I can watch as I adjust the levels. And my first one, I'm going to go for about 15. Press OK. Now I've posterized it. I'm going to go to image, adjustments, and go to brightness and contrast again, set it up to 100, image, adjustments, posterize again. 
this time. I'm going to play. So I'm just trying to keep a solid color while still seeing a clear outline. That actually looks pretty good there at 10. I'm going to press OK. Now this time, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. I'm going to select right in the center here and move my cursor until I'm in the block. You know what, I'm actually not happy with that. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm actually going to press Cancel. And as you see, because I cancelled out of that dialog, that it actually didn't add the step here. So if you try something and it doesn't work out, just press cancel and then you're going to still be at the last step where you uh, left off. So, you know what, I'm going to do the contrast one more time. So I'm going to go image, adjustments, contrast. So this is the third time I'm doing it. I'm going to press OK. And again, I'm going to go to image, adjustments, Posterize, wherever posterize is, and go with 10 again. This time I'm going to right click the layer and choose blending options. I'm going to choose stroke and I'm going to change the color to a light gray and it's on the outside. I'm going to go with five pixels just to really outline the define the outer edge. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to right click and choose rasterize style layer and now my layer is flattened again. Now I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to pick do, 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 do. curves and again I'm going to choose the center and drag it down to this one here. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go to image adjustments posterize Bring it down to 2 and I'm going to press OK. And that looks like a pretty decent line drawing to me so I'm going to press stop because it's been completed. Now what I'm going to do, this isn't part of the recording, but um, I'm going to double click this layer. I'm going to name it to front and then I'm going to right click it and choose Convert to Smart Object. And basically that kind of places it in a container so that I can select the Move tool, move it around and scale it without impacting the original art. So now we've created that action, my comic line art croaky. I'm going to go to open up the uh, other croaky, the uh, rear view that we created. Now this time, instead of going through those steps, which took about five minutes, I'm going to make sure that my layer is selected, then choose the Comic Line Art Croaky. I can expand this if I want to look at the steps. And I'm going to press Play. Play Selection. And in a blink of an eye, it has applied the exact same set of steps to the second image. And I have my line art almost instantly. I'm going to double click this layer and I'm going to call it Back. And then I'm going to right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. So again, my back is in a container. Now I'm going to go to File, New. And this time I'm going to choose Inches and I'm going to go 8.5 by 11 inches. My resolution will put it 200 because that's for print. I'm going to make sure my background is transparent and I'm going to press OK. And basically leave this as an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, that you would print on. I'm going to go back to my croaky one. I'm going to right click front and choose a duplicate layer. But I'm going to change the document to my untitled document, the new one I just created. And then I'm going to go to croaky two and I'm going to right click on the layer 
duplicate layer, and again I'm going to switch it to Untitled. And then I'm going to go to Untitled 1, and I can see my two renders here. I'm going to shift click to select them both, and choose Edit, Transform, Scale, and I'm just guessing here, but we'll go with around 75%. Uh, you know what, that's a little bit too small. Let's go back to 85. And I'm going to press the uh, check mark here to say OK. I'm going to select the front layer and make sure that I have my move tool selected and just move it up to the right here. I'm going to select the back layer with my move tool still selected and move it to the left. So now I have my uh, croaky figure in two different poses side by side, ready to print on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper um, so that we can trace it onto a piece of art paper of the same size um, for our uh, traditional illustration. Um, so that's about where we're going to leave you. I'm just going to save this to my desktop as my croaky. And uh, we'll see you next um, in the real world. So stay tuned for uh, part three should be coming up uh, in the next few days. Thank you.